Hi everyone! Today in Tort Talk Chat with the Pro, I'm very excited to talk to one of my Swedish friends that I played with out on tour. She's been a very successful amateur. She started playing golf very young and she also did a lot of skiing. She decided to go on the golfing route and we will find out why. She has won a major, the ANA, and she is now residing in Orlando, Florida. So I'm very happy to introduce to you Penilla Lindberg. So I want to welcome my Swedish friend Penilla Lindberg. Where are you at right now? I am sitting at my home in Orlando, so not too far away from you. No, no, you're not actually. Um, so how come you have settled in Orlando? Uh, oh, wow. Um, I guess a lot of coincidences, but uh, my, at the time, boyfriend, now husband, uh, yeah. he, uh, Daniel, he's from England, but his family at the time uh, were living here in Orlando, and that's really kind of what, what drew me to Orlando. I was living in Oklahoma at the time, yeah. that's where okay. I was went to university and I still based myself there my first two years on tour uh, okay. but then it was kind of time to look for a, a place with a little better weather in the winter and it was uh, Florida was a good option then yeah yeah absolutely no Orlando is great it's, it's too hot in the summer but the rest of the year it's, it's perfect to live here for sure um, yeah so you you started playing golf pretty early obviously back in in Sweden yes I did uh, I guess we both kind of come from uh, similar backgrounds as in the weather we had where we grew up uh, the two of us not too far away from each other so as yeah. you know the golf the golf season was very short yes, uh, for sure. <laughs> my parents uh, played a lot of golf in the summer so uh, mm -hmm. i loved going to the course with them uh, from as early as i can remember i think i was running around out there soon as I could walk pretty much uh, and just grew up in the environment of the golf course uh, in the summer so even before I was very serious about my golf I was out there rolling around in the grass uh, hanging on my dad's golf bag or eating ice cream or but at, at least I was you know I, I just grew up around the game yeah 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 um, and you also did a lot of alpine skiing right that's right so yeah. those two sports they were perfect to combine uh, mm -hmm. growing up. Uh, yeah. You know, kind of as, as soon as the ski season was over, I could pick up my golf clubs. And then I didn't touch my golf clubs for, you know, probably a good six months. And then uh, golf was something I just did in the summer. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I, I played curling growing up. And that was the same, kind of the same way. And I felt like at the time, it was nice to have that break from from golf and kind of be able to regenerize and then energize and then when you get out there and the golf courses opens again you're you're so hungry for it and you really want to come out there and play and uh, i think that's important even now to make sure as professionals that we have little breaks every now and then how how do you deal with that now when the seasons are getting longer obviously yeah i you probably kind of to like go back to that growing up that way you've probably gotten the question just as many times as me about how Sweden can produce so many good golfers even though we have bad weather and I actually yeah. kind of uh, credit that we grow up doing more sports than just golf uh, as something that's beneficial for us in the long long run because we do grow up both more all-round athletic and just more balanced where it's not just golf so right. Like you said, it's uh, when you turn professional, the golf season gets longer and longer, and that break yeah. is, is hard. It's hard, but I think the good thing that I have from growing up with those kind of breaks in the winter is I'm not scared to put my golf clubs away, uh, mm -hmm. uh, which I think for a lot of pros uh, who grew up in great weather and they mm -hmm. don't really know what to do with themselves or they think they're going to lose their golf swing when they put the clubs away even if it's just for a week here and there I right. really I really don't feel that way I know it's actually going to be beneficial in the long run so you know even though 
yeah, our seasons are long. I tend to play a lot of tournaments. I make sure I put my golf clubs away for a good four weeks, usually over Christmas and New Year's. And right, right. Okay. Uh, um, obviously, this year uh, it looked even a little more different. So right when kind of everything shut down, I did the same thing. I kind of put my golf clubs away for a good four weeks. And uh, mm-hmm. to be on, to be honest, I think that's been beneficial when I've come back again because same thing I've just been hungry again <laughs> right, right yeah exactly I mean this year like you're saying with with COVID and everything going on it's is very different I mean this year you're gonna have um, the women's US Open being played in December so which is very strange obviously so how obviously you had a break in the summer now so will you kind of keep on playing after US Open or how would you prepare for something like that yeah, so I guess kind of our whole season has just shifted a bit later instead. So, yeah, um, yeah that's why I think it was good that I had that break uh, back in kind of April and then was ready to go again. But, uh, yeah, we'll be playing, uh, like you said, we have US Open uh, second, or third, second week of December and then our tour mm-hmm. championship, the CME, is the week after. and We end there on December 20th. Uh, so uh, right. I'll, be re- I'll be ready to put my clubs away by then but no I'll kind of keep the, the pedal down until then uh, because uh, yeah like, because I had that break earlier in the year so mm. I shouldn't be too burnt out uh, uh, even though we're playing in December but uh, I think with even we might have some schedule changes at the start of next year because obviously kind of this whole COVID situation is not going to be over so we might have a little bit more time off at the start of the year instead, but we'll see. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, so then you you went to college, like you mentioned earlier, um, in America. So how? why did you go there? What was your choice of going to America and going to college? And obviously you went to a great one with Oklahoma State, which is, you know, ranked one of the better ones in America. Did you have other options too? Um, uh, tell, tell us a little bit about how how was that decision and, why did you go to Oklahoma? Yeah, so when I was in high school, I made the decision that I wanted to come to the U.S. to play college golf. And it was really looking at my, my dream scenario was to one day play on the LPGA Tour. Yeah. And obviously, I felt that with that as my kind of end goal, as my dream to play out here, mm-hmm. then what's the, what's the best way of getting there? And I felt it is, to move to the U.S. as soon as possible. Uh, okay. So I, I started to reach out to different schools, and uh, I had a few different options. Uh, I came over on a few different recruiting trips, uh, different parts of the country, but I really fell for Oklahoma State, uh, like you said, the strength of the golf program, but especially mm-hmm. the practice facilities there. Um, oh, okay. as, as soon as I saw them, I fell in love with the place and we have had a, a lot of Swedish players before me play at Oklahoma yeah. State and uh-huh. they especially girls but some good uh, guys as well and they all spoke so highly about the place so that really made mm-hmm. me feel comfortable making that decision to go there and uh, then I, I stayed all four years but I always I mean it's a big kind of scary decision to, to move from Sweden to the US for, for yeah. college at that age yeah, sure. but I uh-huh. always I always told myself I'm going to take one year at a time and I know my first year just flew by so of course I wanted to come back for a second year (laughs) and after two two, after two years then I felt like oh I still have more to learn before Mm -hmm. uh, even thinking about turning pro so then I came back for a third year and after three years I'm like oh now I'm almost done with my education too so I might as well stay for four (laughs) so that's that's kind of how that's kind of how uh, I ended up staying there for four years. Mm, yeah, uh, yeah. Because I mean, some younger girls now are coming out and they don't even go to college, and a lot of them might only go for two years. Do you see a benefit of going four years, or how how uh, would you look at it? Yeah, personally, I don't think my game was ready uh, earlier, uh, mm-hmm. so I needed the four years. But then also, I think just the way that I've been brought up at home Uh, education Mm -hmm. was something that's always been important yeah Uh, you know it was never pushed on me from my parents but at the back of my in in the back of my head I knew that I wanted that backup plan 
It's like, yes, my dream is to play professional golf, but if that doesn't work out, I want to have that education to fall back on. So I knew that the tour was going to be there for me. So that's why I didn't feel a rush to leave early. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, there's a lot of discussions there back and forth. You know, some girls come out very early and are they ready for a professional career at that early age or is it better to get some education but I guess it's, it's a personal choice and um, and whatever but I think it's uh, you know I think it's important too to look at players that have finished college and see that you can be very successful even if you finish college and I think um, for me personally I finished college as well and I think it's a great experience that you can never experience again unless you do it at that time it's you don't have the same experience maybe if you're older and go back to college so no, I totally agree. I totally agree and obviously that's something that's changed so much even mm. I mean just in the last 10 years it was more unheard of I mean both uh, when you turn pro and when I turn pro to come out that early on tour but yeah. now you know when girls see that their friends turn pro at 18 of course that attraction is there but you really have yeah. to think about if you're mature enough for it, if you're ready for it, uh, it's, yeah, it's no right or wrong answer. But no, I'm, I'm always gonna, you know, I like the decisions I made. And if someone asked me, I will say, enjoy that college experience. Cause yes, the, you will never get that back. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, so growing up, um, um, I think Annika is a bit of a mentor for you or someone that you look up to. Um, in our like, little business that we have started, we're, we're trying to do some mentoring and uh, helping players that are trying to reach their goals, whether they're juniors or high school or college. And do you see mentoring as a, a be, or um, important part of your career? Yes, I, I say especially, yeah, I, I, I think yes, for sure. I mean, it, it doesn't matter if it's Annika who's, obviously one of the best players ever or if it's just someone who uh, has played tour golf but not at the, that same level or even if it's just uh, a really good coach but it it is important you have a good team around you um, mm -hmm. and and then more than just you know, someone who knows the golf swing because it when it comes to playing professional golf or even reaching golf at a, at a lower level amateur or whatever it is uh, there's so much more to it than than just having a pretty golf swing. So I I, I for sure think that's something that's important, and mm -hmm. I feel lucky that I've been surrounded by good people and good team who's always believed in me, but also you know pushed me in the right direction. Uh, combined with having that uh, kind of inner drive for myself, but that's I mm -hmm. think really how you how you reach your goals. Uh, because uh, it's hard to do on your own, that's for sure. And then just being comfortable asking questions to someone, uh, I think yeah. that's important. And that's, I feel like that's something that I try to do with maybe our younger Swedish players now. I mean, mm -hmm. and they're not going to be asking questions maybe so much about even I mean, how to play golf. It's more about tour life and how you travel and how yeah. you do, I mean, it, any, everything around it, because there's so mm -hmm. much more to it. So... I I try to help them as much as I can. So uh, I I think uh, all that stuff is uh, is really beneficial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I think so too. And and like you said, it's easy to just have a swing coach and you think that's it. But there's there's a lot of other parts that needs to be um, put together um, as a little puzzle and get it to work for you. So yeah, um, golf is. Yeah. Golf is so complex uh, that mm -hmm. uh, you're, you're never, you're never going to, you know, finish learning uh, everything you need to know. And uh, it's, uh, it's important to be open to getting input from, from other people, uh, but at the same time, mm, kind of sort all that out too. You know, you don't need to believe everything you read or hear, but uh, kind of you, you choose your people that, who you you think will be be good for your game obviously yeah yeah absolutely um obviously uh the highlight of your career so far has been your major win at the ana uh 2018 um how was that a win that came you felt like 
oh, where did this come from? Or was it something that was building up before that, that you felt like I, I have something coming here and it, it's going to pop any time? Or how, how did that week kind of turn out for you? Uh, both y yes and no to, to your answer. I mean, in one way, if you look at it long term, uh, I was building up towards it because uh, mm -hmm. I, I kind of uh, describe my career as I've taken these little steps up uh, my whole yeah. career. Um, right. You know, some people come out, they win in their first year or first few years on tour, mm -hmm. but my kind of uh, curve uh, has been much slower up, but I still felt yeah. like I was... I kept learning, I kept improving, I kept getting better. Mm. And of course, I thought the next step was, yes, win an event, but maybe a smaller event. Uh, but for the first time in my career, it probably felt like I kind of skipped a couple of steps by right, making right. that first, <laughs> first win a major. Uh, yeah. But then to kind of go into more leading up to the event. Uh, so that was, uh, you know, end of March in 2018. Mm. And uh, at our tour championship in 2017, I finished fourth and okay. I that was the first time I would say I was in contention on Sunday and felt mm -hmm. comfortable in contention on Sunday and felt like I was playing well under that kind of pressure so right. that exper that experience was something I for sure leaned on uh, a few months later when I played the A&A &A. and mm -hmm. it, it's funny because during 2017 there I had been struggling with my game but I felt like I was working on really good things, uh, but it wasn't really showing up on the golf course. But, you know, I kept believing in what I was doing. And my coach was actually at our tour championship down in Naples. And right. dur during Sunday, when I was up there at the first page of the leaderboard, he kept taking pictures of the big leaderboards on the golf mm -hmm. course. And he told me after the round, he said, Pernilla, if you ever doubt yourself again, and that you do not belong in the top, I'm going to show you these pictures and remind you. So that <laughs> oh, was, that's good. You know, yeah, exactly. So that yeah. was kind of a little bit of a turning point there. So I think without that experience, uh, I would not have felt as comfortable as I did um, during A&A. &A. But then just to go back how funny of a game golf is, I two weeks before my win there, I missed the cut in Phoenix by a lot of shots. I almost finished dead last after Thursday, Friday. It was oh, okay. like, it, it was terrible. And, uh, but it's same thing. I feel like I'm doing really good things, but I'm, I'm not sure what's happening on the golf course. So mm -hmm. I was grind, I was grinding so hard on the driving range that Saturday, Sunday in Phoenix without, or after missing the cast and, uh, you know, did a few changes where I'm just t told myself, okay, I have to go back to hitting my comfortable draw uh, and just finding my way back to some kind of good old things that um, I knew had worked in the past. And if it wasn't for that weekend and having those long <laughs> grinding sessions on the driving range, I don't think right. I would have had that win two weeks later. So it kind of, yeah, it just shows you, you never really know when all that hard mm -hmm. work is going to pay, pay off. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's a, that's a thing with, with golf that I feel is good in a way that, uh, or it, yeah, it's good and bad, but it's good that you finish a Sunday and a new week starts and everybody starts from zero. Um, but it's also, if you win something, it's like, yeah, you won and then people move on and you go on to the next one. So, so it's a bit of both where it's, it's good that everybody starts again, because if you're struggling a little bit, you feel like, okay, well, I always got next week, you know, or I got next week. But then if you win, it's, it's like, okay, and now everybody starts next week and you're kind of, yeah, you're back there again. <laughs> Absolutely. It's, uh, yeah, it's kind of, it, it still can go both ways. And mm. uh, that's, I, I mean, to kind of move on from my win, I think, and I'm not the only one, but who has kind of struggled for a while after having, uh, you know, a big win on tour. And I yeah. think that's, I mean, it's, it's hard to put your finger on exactly what it is, but a little bit of that, you're kind of like, you're fulfilling this long-term dream. And then suddenly it's like, okay, yeah, you crossed that box, but now you're back at square one again. It's like, you, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's uh, I mean, it is so rewarding, but mm. you also, you're, yeah, next Monday, it's like, no, we're all starting from zero again. 
yeah yeah exactly um so yeah it's fun but it was you know a great great to to have a major any time of the career and and it's i mean i'm sure it was um amazing with everything that comes with it and um the you know the comfortness of knowing that you know i have status whatever and um, you can just move move forward and and try to reach um your next goals or whatever and um obviously at ana um daniel was catting for you at the time right yes so that must have been a, you know a special feeling and um um you guys met out there on tour and he's been kind of catting for you on and off i know he's been catting and not catting um he's catting for you right now Correct. so um what what have been like why has it been like on and off and what what have your challenges been and and why you know how it works or not work because obviously with me and Sean out on tour with you know we didn't work together we only had a few months we worked together but <clears throat> for us it, it worked better to not kind of work yeah to, to not work together <laughs> but um obviously the, there's personal options about that but um how how does it work with you guys like why has it been so much on and off yes uh so it's i mean there's so many kind of strings to pull on there but it's mm. first of all uh, i mean working together with your significant other it's not for everyone that's for sure like yeah i mean we yeah. can both we can both say that and uh, <laughs> yep. we uh, I kind of joke and say that even after we had worked together for almost seven years, we still chose to get married. So, I mean, that should be a good sign. Yes, yes, definitely. <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, no, I, I mean, the big reason it's been a little on and off. So 2017, we did not work together. And at the start of 2019, we did not work together. But besides that, we've pretty much worked together nonstop since 2012. So mm -hmm. it's... Uh, it's we have worked I mean we've spent a lot of time together and that's mm. really what it comes down to when we have kind of struggled it's what do you talk about at the end of the day uh right. we have spent every second together mm. I I can't even ask you how was your day or when we're out on the golf course I can't ask you how was last night what did you have for dinner because mm. we spent every second together so that's <laughs> <laughs> that's the hard part and I mean that sounds mm -hmm. like a small thing but it really can kind of nag on you when mm. I mean you, you do spend that much time together but then yeah. on the other hand um, to be out there as a team and when you perform well together as a team it's mm -hmm. so rewarding and uh, mm. I mean I I feel like it's more rewarding when I play good and have him on my back and the other way around. I know he enjoys it more when he's catting for me and we have a good finish. So, oh, okay. you know, that's, okay. that's um, kind of what makes up for it. Uh, but the biggest thing is no one knows my game as well as him. So mm -hmm. when we have, tr when we have tried to take time apart, when we have not been working together, yeah. I've just, str I've just struggled feeling that, my no one no other caddy knows my game as well as him so that's the, mm. the thing that I really miss and I know that he is gonna give a hundred and ten percent for me out there and mm. um, so you know we have learned a lot during all the years that we work together and I think now we're, we're working better than we ever have because of you know all the experiences we have had um, mm. but once again I tell people it's for sure not for everyone. <laughs> no, no, I, I know we, yeah, because I was the same um, with us. We just felt, it, you know, it was too much time together, even though I know that we would work good together. And, and obviously we had a, a win together as well, but um, it, it's hard. You, I think for us, it was important to just spend yeah time apart. And like you say, it, it's a, it's a challenge and, um, but it's great that you guys are, you know knowing your your boundaries and knowing uh you know what to do or what not to do and and things and, like that and, and i think that's something that i think the the only way that it can work uh for couples to to do it is to uh, really make sure that you're good that when you leave the golf course you leave the golf behind and mm -hmm. now 
you're a couple. And that's, right. that's easier said uh, than done. Uh, but that's what I feel like we both uh, gotten better at uh, over time. Yeah, yeah. So having a caddy, obviously, that you can trust and, and rely is obviously very important um, in, um, in a golfing career, right? Exactly. And that's, um, I for sure felt to that, because uh, Daniel knows, I mean, the game of golf really well, and he knows my swing very well, and he knows my swing tendencies very well. So he mm-hmm. kind of works as the connection between me and my coach. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, because in golf, um, compared to like tennis, for example, I mean, most of the players, they have their coaches with them every single week. But in golf, it's a little different. I mean, most of the players out on tour, we don't travel with our coaches full time, far away from. Right. So kind of... Uh, what's worked well for me is Daniel is kind of a second coach. Uh, mm-hmm. So he can really help me kind of keep my game uh, in shape when my coach is not out there. And that's what I was really missing too. When Daniel was out on tour, but caddying for someone else, if I was struggling with my game, I felt like I was kind of there on my own trying to mm-hmm. figure it out. Daniel was down on the other side of the driving range, but I couldn't really go and ask him for help because he was, working for someone else yeah so uh, yeah so that's um, kind of when I was struggling and not having him on the bag that was something that I was really missing yeah 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 because um um obviously uh, with our little tour talk thing you know we Sean has been caddying and he's trying to help players out there preparing um them for tournaments preparing them on the course and I think that's where caddies are very important and that's where they come in you know they walk the courses and they give you all the information that you need um so that you don't have to stress about things and a caddy is important in in that regard to um knowing where to hit where not to hit and um yeah giving you good advice in in preparing for tournaments and stuff totally and i mean that's i think that's the biggest thing if you have a good caddy like you said it just takes so much stress off from the player I Mm. you know I don't have to worry about thinking too much about the the course management stuff uh, when you can rely on your caddy uh, that is uh, doing a good job in that aspect right exactly Um, so you guys got married in New Zealand why did you pick New Zealand (sighs) oh wow Um, favorite country that we had ever visited uh, Mm -hmm. is New Zealand and so we were always drawn to New Zealand uh, for that reason but then it, re- it almost came down to it's gonna sound kind of silly but we were trying to figure out where do we get married Daniel is from England his family is there my family yeah. is in Swe- my family is in Sweden we live in the US we know people all over the world <laughs> so then it's like okay how do we figure this out logistically and then we were like you know what if we do something really small really far away we don't really offend anyone by not inviting them (laughs) (laughs) no that's true (laughs) so uh, and since neither one of us gets to spend much time with our families it was Mm. a really nice way to kind of do a big family holiday with the Mm -hmm. wedding in the middle so that's what we did we just had our parents and our siblings and their partners there um, and we all stayed together in a big house for a week and our wedding was in the middle of the week all right okay yeah it was, it was yeah. interesting but it, i mean it looked like a beautiful uh wedding for sure and, and new zealand is one of my favorite countries too it's it's really nice so i can understand the the choice yeah. of that but um yeah, yeah so. no it was it was this different for sure uh, but it was pretty cool too because i know uh my parents had always had new zealand on their bucket list and uh, mm-hmm. as they're getting older I, I don't think if it wasn't for our wedding i'm not sure they would have ever made it there so it was pretty right. neat, neat to be able to bring them there too and show why we uh, love new zealand so much yeah yeah so what do you do you and daniel do um outside of golf like what do you do when you're home i know you're both um into you know health and cooking and stuff so so what are your interests outside of golf yeah uh, you kind of uh, 
uh, named it right there. We both like uh, to be active. Uh, we really do enjoy the outdoors. Uh, mm -hmm. Another reason why we love New Zealand. I know Florida is not the best for hiking, but no. we try to get a few trips uh, in throughout the year. You know, if we're out on the West Coast and have a week mm -hmm. off or something like that, uh, we, we try to schedule something like that in. And Daniel is really good at uh, always kind of planning uh, little adventures throughout the year uh, okay. so uh, you know we went to Yosemite last year we went to Park City a few weeks ago now during an off week and uh, so that's uh, something we really do enjoy doing just being in the outdoors doing some hiking uh, and just staying fit in general working mm -hmm. out uh, so when we're home <laughs> this year now even though we live in a one bedroom condo we've kind of turned our living room into a little bit of a of a gym uh, oh, okay. we, you know we it was hard to uh find weights uh, this year but as soon as uh, anything has showed up uh, in stores we've uh, bought mm -hmm. more and more dumbbells and uh, okay. got a peloton right there uh, yeah. which yeah. Uh, we bought back in january before all of this happened and little oh, did we know okay. how much use we were going to get of that <laughs> Right away. Oh, I see. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah, we, we do a lot of that. But then something that I really like doing uh, that kind of feels like my quiet time is cooking. Um, okay. It's, um, it's also something when we're out on tour, um, you know, we eat out so much. You, you know <laughs> what tour life is like. So when we're home, yeah, it's nice yeah. to have home-cooked meals. So mm -hmm. I love trying new recipes when I'm home. Uh, kind of my first thing I always do when I get home from um, uh, a trip is I sit down, I plan meals for a week, I write my shopping list. I actually, I like going to the grocery store. I walk up and down the aisles and uh, then uh, try some new recipes throughout the week. And uh, okay. that's uh, kind of, yeah, my quiet time in the kitchen. And mm. uh, I, I, I've, I mean, I focus on a lot of, healthy cooking uh, and uh, do a little bit of baking and um, besides that it's I mean we, we don't do a whole lot uh, when we're home uh, right. life is so busy when we're on the road that it's mm -hmm. nice to kind of uh, just live life at home have some quiet evenings in and if we do kind of anything when we're home uh, our treat is usually to go to kind of a nice coffee shop uh, for a couple hours and the afternoon or something like that. Uh, right. Okay. Obviously, this year everything just feels so so different for for everyone. But yeah, uh, that's uh, in one way. You know, people say they spend so much more time at home, and we're like, mm -hmm. yeah, this is kind of what we like doing when we're home, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Exactly. I. I mean, I. I know myself when you know you had weeks off. They, you know, they always ask you, oh, so where do you want to go? I was like, I don't want to go anywhere. I just want to be home. And now being away from the tour for a few years is now we're kind of looking forward to going places and visit places um, because we were not very good at doing things while we were out on the road uh, because it was mostly golf. You know, you have hotels, airports, golf courses. Um, so now finally we can feel like we actually want to, go and see places that, um, you know, we haven't seen before. But, yeah, definitely being on the tour, you're like, oh, just nice to be home and not having to have plans or doing things. Exactly. And, yeah, I can totally relate to that. It's so easy to kind of get into that same routine out on tour where it is just golf and hotel rooms and airports. And that's where I feel very lucky that Daniel has always been very good at making sure we, we do a little bit more exploring too. Uh, so... I can actually say that, you know, all, during all these years on tour that I have managed to, to see a few, a few places and explore a little bit more, but that's, that's really thanks to him and he loves planning those trips. Oh, okay. Well, that's very good. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so obviously I've seen that you, um, like your amateur career, um, whatever, you've had great success in the team events. You know, like European Team Girls, Junior Solheim, the Vagliano Trophy, European Ladies Team, um, Espirito Santo Trophy, the International Crown. Um, but obviously one thing is the Solheim, and I'm sure that's 
one thing that you <laughs> would really love to play. Um, how frustrating has that been not to be able to get in the team and play Solheim? Yeah, of course, uh, very. Uh, but at the same time, I tried to not, you know, uh, I, I don't know if waste energy is uh, the right word, but I, instead of like feeling about it that way, I'm just kind of keeping my head high and uh, know that I still have chances coming up. But no, of course, it's disappointing. I, I've kind of, you know, had some better spells in my play when it's been the, the off year from Solheim. And then I kind of put too much pressure on myself uh, the last few months uh, leading up to Solheim because it's something that I had really wanted. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I can only learn from those experiences. And, uh, and I, you know, that's obviously a, a big goal for, for next year. Uh, but I can't get too far ahead of myself. I can just keep doing the hard work now. And uh, yeah. hopefully that's going to pay off. But no, I mean, seeing all the, the cool experiences that, uh, you guys have had on the European team uh, yeah. of course it's yeah. something I want to be part of um, mm. and uh, like you said I've been on plenty of other teams and know how special that is so right. uh, yes you're going to see me working hard towards it that's for sure <laughs> yeah yeah and then the Olympics is supposed to be on next year um, so is that something you prepare for or is kind of the same thought process as the Solheim yeah, I would say it's kind of the same. Uh, you know, any kind of qualifying process, I I always kind of look at it the same way that I I can only take care of what I do on a day to day day to day basis. And yes. uh, if uh, if I do the right things now and the results come, then yes, I'll end up there. So I try to not get kind of too far ahead of myself. And uh, I've always been a player who focuses a lot more on kind of the process oriented goals rather mm -hmm. than result goals because right. re result goals I've always said um, those are not only in your control I mean I mm -hmm. can go out and play my best golf ever but someone else happens to play better and I don't win win that tournament uh, yeah but if yeah. I focus on the processes and uh, they will eventually take me to to where I I want to be yeah because we, we notice a lot of times when you talk to juniors or high school players or whatever, it's like, what what is your goal for this week? Um, most of them will say a score. Yeah. But like you say, there's so many other things that's involved with the score. So if you do the process the best that you can or your pre-shot routine or whatever, there's so many other goals that you can have than not just a score. So that's, yes. yeah, but the score is how, well, sometimes, a lot of times it's how others are looking at you or viewing you and seeing, oh, they're shooting this score, so that score or that one must be, must be really good, but there's so many other things or other goals that you can set rather than a score. A score will come, we feel, from other things that are in place. It's totally, and I think if you... Um, get too stuck in you know thinking about just the score and um, something that I think a lot of golfers can relate to is and especially golf or players who play at a tournament level is it's so easy to kind of be one with your score if you mm -hmm. shoot an 80 you're going to feel really bad that day if you shoot a 70 you're going to feel good about yourself so mm -hmm. if you try to kind of remove yourself a little bit from the score and focus on those processes and just be happy if you tick the boxes with those processes. I just think that you're going to, you know, feel a lot better about yourself too. And that's, I mean, I have even kind of changed my practice a little bit to be more like that because it's so easy to, you go to the range and you, you just stand there and you try, I mean, you try to hit balls until you feel good about something and right. you might be there until the end of the day and you <laughs> might still not feel good about it so now yeah I cannot I cannot try to plan my practice a little bit more it's like okay this is what I'm gonna do today and when I have done that I can be happy with myself mm -hmm. and check my box and then not really judge was it good or was it bad but just like you just do do what you're meant to do and I think you know that's something just to keep yourself a little bit sane and not the 
live and die with how your golf is going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's, it's, it's easy to be, um, to control your feelings through a score. Um, definitely. As a golfer, it is. But like you say, if you can put yourself outside of it and look at it um, from a different view, then I think that will help a lot of golfers for sure. Yeah, and it's easier said than done. That's for sure. But, oh, yeah. uh, I, I think I think if everyone can kind of try to at least think a little bit more in that way, they I think it would be just a lot easier in everyone mentally. <laughs> yes, <laughs> definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, so I have like a little um, quick five, six questions. Like you yeah. just come up with the answer, whatever it comes to your mind. Um, so, what's your favorite food? Oh, food you said? Oh, um, I, so when I'm home, I tend to almost only cook uh, plant-based uh, meals. Yeah. And uh, my go-to at the moment are these vegan tacos that I make. They've been, uh, so that's, uh, but tacos in general, uh, no matter if it's my, my own uh, ones that I make or not, mm -hmm. that might be up on top of the list. But otherwise, any kind of Asian food as well uh, is always something that I'm going to go for. Okay. Okay. What's your favorite drink? Kombucha. Kombucha. Okay. Do you make your own? I do not. I probably, this year I probably could have because I spent uh, plenty of time at home. Uh, but uh, I was going to be really boring and say water first because that's sure what I drink, <laughs> drink the most. But it's probably not my favorite. Uh, and if I really going to go fancy, I will go for a glass of red wine. But I, I don't drink uh, alcohol very much. But that would be, for sure be my drink of choice. Mm, okay. Your favorite travel destination? Oh, I think I already answered that. New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's your favorite word? Wow. Um, <laughs> that's, uh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't know why. I, it's, uh, it's a question that I probably never had before, but mm -hmm. I, I know sometimes when I listen to interviews, uh, with myself it's a, it's a word that I use a lot and in one way it's probably it's kind of positive that I'm like yes absolutely I'll do that and mm -hmm. so that I feel like that kind of sums up uh, my personality too okay what's your non-favorite word good question the first thing that came to my mind was hate <laughs> <laughs> I don't know uh, I, um, or otherwise it would probably be some word that I really don't like that I struggled pronouncing that would probably be another word that I don't like but I don't know what that would be mm, okay I actually have kind of a funny funny quick little golf story with that I that you can probably kind of relate to as well when I played my first ever international golf tournament mm -hmm. I you know my my English was okay it was good enough but uh, one word that I thought was really hard to pronounce was provisional you know mm. to hit, a, provi hit yeah. a provisional ball so I think yeah. that was my biggest nightmare that please don't get to a situation on the golf course where I have to say <laughs> I'm gonna hit a provisional yeah yeah there, there are some words for sure and then some words that um like in Swedish translates a little different to to what it is in English or whatever, oh. but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there are some, some little <laughs> tricky words for sure. <laughs> but I, I've got to know. I got to know over that by now. Yeah, you have. Yeah, yeah. You've been over here long enough now. Um, <laughs> exactly. So you, you guys have Christmas plans, or will you leave the country or not, or does that all depend on what happens? It's all up in the air. It's it's really hard. Um, yeah, we're still trying to figure it out. Like I said, we're going to play up until December 20th. So mm -hmm. that in itself, uh, it's really close to Christmas. Yeah. I, us I us usually always go home for Christmas. Um, but uh, I don't really feel 100% comfortable doing that this year. Especially my parents are both uh, uh, older. And mm -hmm. I don't really feel like it's the smartest thing to fly across the Atlantic and then, you know, 
go uh, straight to see them. So, uh, but I, at the same time, I haven't seen them since last Christmas. They usually come over to the States a few times mm. a year and they've obviously not been able to do that. And yeah. my brother, my brother and his girlfriend, they had a baby boy back in December. So I, I did see him when he was about a week old, but that was the last time I saw him. So it is hard. I obviously want to want to see my family, but I don't I don't really know how it's going to work this year. No, no, I know it's 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 hard. We're kind of the same situation, but at least now we have um, you know FaceTime. We have all these things, so at least you can kind of have some sort of connection to it. But um, yeah. yeah, it's hard for sure. Yes, and exactly. It's. Uh, yeah it's hard to know kind of what uh, what you want to do what the right thing to do is but uh, yeah we will figure it out <laughs> yeah yeah all right well I think that's um, what I have for now thank you so much for uh, for joining me it was great that, yeah thanks for having me yeah yeah so um, have a great um, well rest of the season I know you still have some tournaments to go and um Hopefully this um, COVID will um, probably not go away, but at least kind of quiet down a little bit and we can start to do some other kind of travels soon. Yes, I hope so too. Yeah. Nice talking to you. Good luck yeah, with everything too. too. Yeah, thank you. Take care and um, all the best with everything. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye.